Today I want to talk about breakpoints. This is a brand new concept in version 10. Let's assume we have here our scheduler and today she is frustrated. She is frustrated because she does not understand the output of the scheduling algorithm. She does not understand why the system picks certain resources. She would have picked others. But now she has the possibility to set breakpoints. That means to stop the system at certain events and to get a better insight into the scheduling algorithm. And even she has the possibility to override the system's decision and to pick or to select her own resources. Let's see how that works. Okay, we are here on our Mint page and we, are, we have selected the recurrent training for the A320. And let's start with test number four. This is uh, only a request which has not been scheduled. So we say create project to schedule this project. And to set a breakpoint, we have to select a slot codes. We have to go to this page. And here you can see that we have the, a column for our breakpoints. We could set a breakpoint for every slot group. But what we typically do is we would like to say, for example, for our flight instructors, there is where we set one breakpoint here. And please observe that our scheduling criteria for the flight instructors at the moment is cost based, right? At the moment we said we want to take the least expensive uh, instructor to be picked first. So then we go to the scheduling page, click on schedule. And now since there is a breakpoint set, for this briefing session here, you can see that the briefing is blinking. I will zoom in a little bit. So that makes it a little bit clearer. And also we can do it like this. Okay, and now you can see this briefing event is blinking. And that means we are talking now about the briefing event on day two, on this Tuesday. And the system shows us these three resources, they are qualified. So in this list here, you will see a list of qualified resources and they are ordered by the scheduling criteria, which was cost-based. So by default, the system would pick Mr. McGowan because he only costs $90 the hour, right? Mr. Lemmerman is 100 and Mr. Donald is $125. So the, the, the first one in this list is the one that is picked by the system by default. But you could say, for example, but I want to take now Mr. Lemmerman. That would work. So we say Mr. Lemmerman for day one for this briefing session and we click on apply. If we click apply, then the system jumps to the next breakpoint. If we click resume, it would not stop anymore. Right? It would not stop anymore. It would continue with the normal execution of the scheduling algorithm. But if we click apply, then it moves to the next breakpoint. And the next breakpoint now is the briefing on the next day. And you might ask yourself, well, why the next day and why doesn't the system break on the simulator and the debriefing? Well, the reason is simple. There is a required continuity on day one. So with your selection of Mr. Lemmerman for the first day, there was no further option. You had to put Mr. Lemmerman on the simulator session and on the debriefing session. And that is why the system did not break uh, for the simulator or the debriefing session. But what you can see now is that Mr. Lemmerman is shown in gray. It says he is qualified, but you can't select him because he that would break the discontinuity rule, right? The Mr. Lemmerman cannot be selected because we defined discontinuity between day one and day two. We said on day two, it must be a flight instructor. Yes, but it must be a different flight instructor. And that is why Mr. Lemmerman cannot be selected. And we say, okay, Mr. McGowan, we click on apply and you can see that's it. And now we schedule it. And I just want to show you, we uh, say delete project delete and I schedule that again. I I'm going to schedule this again and just to show you how it looks like if we select another property, not cost-based. For example, if we said we want to select a property, which is the seniority, and we would want to pick first the maximum seniority number, for example, like this, and now we set the breakpoint. How does this look like now? Okay, let's see. We click schedule. Again, it opens here at the at the briefing, but now the first one 
the, the one that the system takes by default is Mr. John Donald because he has the highest seniority and Mr. Lemmerman has the lowest seniority and that is now uh, how the system sorts these availability and qualified resources. In this case, I just click on resume to continue with the algorithm. It was just to show you these different options are possible. And we hope that this new feature uh, helps you to get a little bit more insight into the scheduling algorithm and to understand what is going on here.